We all want more freedom, and a lot of us work hard now in the hope we'll feel free later. What if there was another way? A way to feel happier, more free, and confident to get better results right now. Welcome to Your Freedom Unlimited, where we share practical stories and strategies to help you show up authentically, drop your fears, and take inspired action on what matters most to you. I'm your host, Jen Ramsey. As a coach with a love for metaphysics, science, spirituality, and strategies that get results, I'll help you step away from self-doubt and create a powerful new story for your life, business, or career. Join me. Hi, welcome to Your Freedom Unlimited. My name's Jen Ramsey, and I'm excited to share with you today's episode where we're talking about remembering who we truly are. Because when we do this, it opens the doorway to freedom so we can start to do more of what matters most to us right now. This episode is an extension of episode two, where I spoke about what freedom means and how we can feel more free today rather than waiting for some far off time to feel more free. The freedom I'm talking about is very subtle, yet just as important and far reaching as those elementary freedoms that we hold so dear in the West, that freedom of speech and freedom of democracy. But the freedom I'm talking about now is very subtle, but it reaches into every moment of how we live our lives. I'm talking about how we feel inside ourselves every day. Those feelings that we have of not good enough or good enough, and those feelings of not enough or enough. So just to check in on this, do you get up in the morning and worry that you're already up too late and you've got this huge to-do list that you're not sure how you're going to get through during the day? And then by the time you get to the end of the day, you're feeling extremely stressed because it's nowhere near half done. Or do you get up feeling excited by your day, feeling like you've got all of the time in the world inspired by the day ahead? Or do you constantly feel like you don't have enough, enough time, enough money, time to do the things or the, the things that you really want to do? In episode two, I spoke about these things and I, I spoke about two conscious shifts in frequency we can make to really address these feelings of not good enough and not enough. When I talked about that, I talked about the idea of, you know, blinkers, the fact that in our sort of modern society, we, it's almost like we've got these blinkers on, like the carriage horses of old, and we can't see really the bigger picture view. But if we just take those blinkers off and consciously shift our perspective, then that's our chance to really see the bigger picture and find some true freedom within ourselves. So when I'm talking about these conscious, sh conscious shifts, I mean, I'm meaning a conscious shift to our whole frequency or what I call our whole frequency code on a particular topic or situation. I'll talk a lot more about frequency codes in future episodes, but for today, I just wanted to focus in more on those two vital frequency shifts. So what were they? Well, the first shift was from not enough or I don't have enough to I have a lot. And this was about seeing the abundance we have available to us right now. And if you'd like to know more about that, head on back to episode two, where you'll hear me talk a bit more about that. The second vital shift in frequency was from feeling not good enough to understanding who we truly are. And today I want to talk more about that. I want to talk more about remembering who we truly are as it's a big one and it can make all the difference to our lives. So this shift in frequency is really about tearing down that limiting belief that we aren't good enough. How do we do that? It's a big shift, but it's one that has certainly worked for me. It's actually by realizing that instead of being not good enough, we're actually amazing because we are all part of a larger consciousness. We're just smaller pieces of the larger whole having a physical experience right now. So what do I mean by that? I know it's a big concept. Well, for, for me, it means that we are perfect and worthy as we are, that we have access to this immense inner power if we just allow ourselves to see it, and that we are the creator of our lives and our reality. When you look at things from this perspective, we can suddenly jump back into the driver's seat of our life. 
And I have to say, when I realized this, everything changed. I suddenly was able to relax. I was able to let go. And I let myself out of the jail cell I'd put myself in and I opened myself up to the true possibilities of my life. And today I wanted to get more deeply into this. I wanted to share with you how I finally realized this for myself. I know that it's big, so I felt it was the, the best thing I could do was to share my own experience of this. So it did take me a while, but when the shift did come, it changed everything. So for many years, I'm not sure about you, but I'd heard these concepts, but not really believe them. I believed, you know, that we were part of a bigger whole and I wanted to, I knew about this intellectually and I wanted to believe it more deeply, but somehow I didn't or I couldn't. I'd heard so many people say it, people that I really respected like Deepak Chopra, people like Eckhart Tolle. I seemed to accept it intellectually, but I didn't have any real tangible experience of it within myself. And as someone who has struggled for years with anxiety, I can see now how I was probably pretty naturally suspicious of anything that might look like an easy solution to a problem. And knowing what I know now about the brain from a neuroscience perspective, that we are actually all naturally wired for a negativity bias, then it was no wonder that I'd been a little skeptical. You might be feeling the same way now. I was asking myself, how could something like this work for me? Then one night a couple of years ago, something happened and I was doing something pretty mundane. I was washing the dishes after dinner. It was quite late at night and I was listening to a podcast to yet another person. This time it was a channel speaking about the truth of who we are. And, you know, it was a really strange moment. In that moment, I, it was like I surrendered. I just thought, well, why not? Why not try this one on for size? Why not just give this idea a go? If everyone is saying it, and many people who I respect worldwide are saying it, why not try it on for size? The funny thing was, it was almost like I was, I was sick of hearing everyone saying it, so I just thought I should give it a go. I felt like I'd been worn down by the repetition of it all, and it was just time for me to surrender. You know that feeling you had as a child when your mother told you to clean your room for the hundredth time and you felt really it would just be easier to clean your room rather than have another argument? That's how I felt that night. And I was just like, all right then, I'll just give it a go. So I did. I fully let go and I surrendered to this idea. I just thought, okay, I'm going to really try this idea on for real this time. Instead of going through the motions of spirituality, you know, doing those things like lighting incense, lighting a candle, going to yoga, I decided I was really going to try this on. So over the next few months, I started to really allow this concept, this idea of being part of the bigger consciousness into my mind and into my energy field daily. It was probably timely because at the same time I was studying quantum physics and how, how that can impact our, our vibration. And I was really starting to go to the next level in terms of my yoga practice and meditation. And somewhere along in there, I came across the teachings of Joshua, who again was saying, we are worthy as we are and definitely part of the higher consciousness. All roads were leading to Rome. So I went with it. What was interesting though, I really decided I'm going to go with this. And I, as part of it, I started to question if I really was part of source consciousness, how could I know this for myself and my body? I guess I was looking to go to that deeper level. And I started asking that question and I asked that question from a positive perspective rather than a negative perspective of it couldn't happen for me. And I think it was because I'd come from this point of having lived for most of my life in my head quite a hostage to anxiety that I just thought that I really wanted to feel this for myself and my body. And I, I was asking, how could I really open to this idea and live it from a very real and authentic place within myself? How could I actually feel it inside my body? So this question of how I could feel this inside my body was on my mind daily for quite a while. I couldn't tell you for how long, but I just know that it was quite a while. And instead of being impatient, instead of being my old, impatient, cynical self, I trusted that the answer would come when I was ready or when the divine was ready. And then one night, quite randomly, in a yoga class, it happened. 
It was at the end of the class and that beautiful quiet time in the meditation period, that beautiful time at the end of a class that we always have to lie in Shavasana and to seal the practice. And as I was lying there quietly breathing, I felt the energy of my breath inside my body and specifically I felt it inside my diaphragm. And it felt like there were these really magical pinpoints of light dancing inside my body as, as my breath, as my breath made its way from my nostrils, through my chest, through my diaphragm and into my tummy. And I really felt this energy dancing inside me, specifically inside my tummy and in my diaphragm. And it was this aliveness, this this, it was, it was like little pinpricks of energy light and it was like an alive entity inside me. And it was in that moment, I realized the truth of it. I realized I was connected to source. And I realized that my breath was proof of that source connection. So they call it the breath of life for a reason. And what I realized was, was that this breath is not only gives me life while I'm in my physical body, but it is also proof of who I am really. It was such a beautiful moment and I still feel it now. I still connect in with this feeling when I'm breathing in meditation. And it's not always so intense, but when it does, it do, when it does arise, when I consciously remember and I connect back in, so I can, I can bring that feeling back in because I've had that physical feeling inside my body. So that was how it was for me. And looking back now, I realized that remembering who I truly am, it really happened in three parts. The first step was for me to just consciously surrender to that idea, to let go of my cynical thoughts and those thoughts that it could never happen for me. The second idea was, the second step was really this conscious decision to accept the idea and to see my worth as part of this whole picture to look at myself as good enough and as worthy and loved versus those old feelings of not good enough, not enough, and very unworthy and very fearful. So it was a really conscious decision. Um, and I often talk about this as the, I think for a long time, I'd been waiting for someone outside of me to tell me that I was worthy or to pin some sort of medal on my chest and say, yes, you're worthy now. And what I realized was that it was actually a decision that needed to come from inside me, that I was worthy. And then the final step came, that physical confirmation came when I, it only came when I had decided to accept and step in into this process. It was the icing on the cake and I realized it could only come once I'd intellectually accepted the idea and worked towards it, I've moved towards it. I shouldn't say the word work, but I, I just consciously moved toward, towards it and I started asking that question. So. This is my simple story. And look, we are all very different. And I've heard of a lot of people over the years talk of, you know, very dramatic Kundalini awakening, awakenings and very dramatic physical shakeups to remember who they truly are. And they are very fortunate because that's a very clear signpost. And, but for me, it was different. I didn't have some major event. You know, as I've explained, it was very much an unfolding event over a number of years. But I wanted to share this with you to, to let you know that you don't, it doesn't have to be a Kundalini awakening for you to get this realization and that for each of us, it's going to be very different. But what I wanted to share too, was that this has been a huge shift in my life because I understand I'm part of the bigger whole. And because I'm part of source, I realize that I'm no longer a victim to situations, people, or things. I see that I'm really create all of my experiences and that because I'm connected to source, that I'm truly unlimited. So, and when I consciously shift and hold my vibration in this new place of positivity and a possibility, then everything can change. So today, I just wanted to ask you to try this idea on for size. And if you'd like to go a little bit deeper, I have a source connection and intention setting meditation that you can use to just open the window to these ideas of being connected to source. This meditation, the first part of it, just is about stepping into this idea of a source connection. 
And then the second part has a segment where you can set an intention. But I need to say too that that intention setting process that I share with you in this meditation, it is not your standard law of attraction intending, intention setting process. So if you've been feeling a bit stuck in law of attraction, this is something different. The method of intention setting that I'm sharing with you, it's, it's not about the universe bringing you anything or making anything happen for you. It is actually about you coming from this position of source, about you seeing yourself as your creator and the power source of your life. It's about really helping you understand you are source and that you are your source. You are the one who's going to bring what you desire most to you. It's very much an inside job. So to get this free guided meditation, just visit jenramsey.com forward slash intention. There you'll get access to that free download straight away and it will be yours forever. So there is a lot more to this story as you can imagine. So I just like to close out today's episode just to really have you sit with this idea of remembering who we truly are. It is just the first step and there's a lot more I'd like to share with you. So keep tuning in as I share with you more about other conscious shifts that you can take to make a liver happier, more free life so that you can get what matters most to you done. Until we speak again, remember who you truly are and take great care. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Your Freedom Unlimited. If you like this show, please share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, subscribe, rate and review Your Freedom Unlimited on your favorite podcast player. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, you can reach me directly at jenramsey.com. Thanks for listening. 